So it's it's quite I'm a the, film. I'm the reason we saw this film. So I think I need to start off with an apology, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never seen it before, so at least I watched something that I had that I hadn't seen. So, <laughs> yeah, this this is an interesting film to say the least. So uh, the reason I recommended it is because I worked with uh, Misty on one of my movies, uh, mm-hmm. 2016 movie, um, The New York Butcher. It's like a crime thriller. Gotcha. Someone always wanted to work with because we both did some similar movies, like um in terms of the sex there's a lot of sex in my movies a lot of graphic sex same thing with hers but mine mm-hmm. tend to be just like regular standard plotted movies that happens to have a lot of sex her movies are just all based around like 20 minute softcore sex scenes um yep. so it was it was interesting working with her because at that point she was late 30s going on to 40 so she mm-hmm. wanted to move away from the nudity and the sex and stuff like that we still did a sex scene. It wasn't like the most graphic that either of us have done, but um, it was it was nice to say I did a, a, a love scene with Misty Monday. Um, well, there you go. I'm I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she was like uh she was like kind of a big deal in in softcore movies in the late '90s into the 2000s with movies like mm-hmm. Spider Babe. Lord of the G Strings, Playmate of the Apes, the Skinamax movies from that era. Exactly, exactly. The era before like porn was just so readily available. Um, she only did one hardcore scene um, that, well, she may have done more because with her husband or, or, or boyfriend, I think, right? It was her boyfriend at the time. time. Yeah. Yeah. She may have done more because sometimes in softcore sex scenes, the sex is real, but it's just not shown. But she only did one scene where you actually see sex going on. Mm-hmm. in front of the camera and that called was the vampire strangler is that what it is something like it. that yeah 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 in 99 and her boyfriend william hellfire wrote directed starred in it did all that stuff so um but yeah like i said it was it was an interesting movie man yeah i don't know a movie's kind of a stretch for the word this was just, <laughs> I'm not sure what the plot was, to be honest with you here. I mean, there, was a, there was a lot of nudity in between. <laughs> the, the, that's the weird thing about this movie is that it's, I mean, it, it's Lust for Dracula, 2004. It's based on the classic, you know, Dracula story. Um, but it, all the roles are played by women. One man in the movie, I think, and he was very brief in a graveyard. <laughs> Yeah, I, you would even, I don't know who it is, but you might even think it might have been the director or a crew member or something. Because it was, like you said, it was just like a couple of lines. Two of you. Heaven. Hell. And then yep. That was it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the one thing I never got with these softcore movies is that it, it, there was so much lesbianism in it. I don't. I never got the appeal of lesbianism. I know you do a lot of erotic movies in your channel, right? I sure do. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> do you have any insight to that? Like, are you into, like, lesbian movies? Do you think there's a I, reason? I, well, I, I mean, I used to work in a video store back in the late ni- in the 90s, too, when I was in college. And um, uh, that stuff rents. Uh, people, people like to see that. So, and I, I certainly don't mind seeing it. But, yeah, that's it, it appeals to a lot of men. So. I guess, man. I, I don't know. Um, I know Howard Stern when I was younger, like that got me through puberty. <laughs> a lot of I, I still listen to Howard today, actually. Very different now, though. Very different. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yeah. Okay, so let's try and dissect this movie as best we can. <laughs> um, it's not going to be an easy task. So there, there, it starts off with this girl covered in blood in a bathroom, a public bathroom. And she was she was a weird looking girl. She's I would say the definition of a butterface. She had a yeah. great body. You know um, the the way I was thinking of it, she looked like a future meth user. Is kind of the way I looked at it. Uh, yeah. Just uh, like like I'd see her in, in in some sort of. She looks like I don't. Obviously, I'm stereotyping here, but yeah, that's what she looked like to me. Some somebody who was just not a little messed up. Maybe not yet, you, but that's what she kind of looked like. Do you, um, you, you've seen Poltergeist, right? Many times. 
Zelda Rubenstein. Yep. Doesn't she look like a hot version of Zelda Rubenstein? Uh, maybe Zelda. Yeah. Maybe maybe in what fifty years she could be another Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, her face is just. I don't know. She just looks like a grandmother who somehow turned into eighteen, but she still looks like a grandmother. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Now, Misty Monday, I thought she was adorable, but uh, yeah. Yeah. So we get this vampire, and I guess she is, I don't know if she's the A storyline or the B storyline. Again, this movie is very confusing. But part of what's carrying the story is the fact that she doesn't know that she's dead and she doesn't know that she's a vampire. Do you get it now? Understand? You have no home. Only me. I am your home. You're dead. But even with that, there's a twist at the end. So that carries along some of these softcore scenes and it carries along part of the movie. And then the the other storyline is with Misty. And I guess she's crazy or heavily drugged. She's got to be something because she's singing about bats and, and reading bat stories. And, uh... and all the bat bats gathered up their spread their little bat bat wings. Courage. And they all flew out of the cave and little cave door would shut shut soon. And there wouldn't be a second chance. So little bat with all of her little bat bat might. She took her little bat bat. She fell flat on the bottom of the cave floor. Because would never leave. She knew that she could never. A light. The first time, without quite knowing world. And for the first time, bad, bad. I, I. Maybe I misunderstood, but she was crying over that whatever that was that got thrown into the fire near the end. I didn't even know what it was, or was it? supposed to be like a a baby because <laughs> she did have a baby at the end but yeah so when we get introduced to, so as that other storyline goes on and meanders when we first get introduced to missy she's taking it doggy style from another woman <laughs> And I thought when the woman popped up, she'd have a dildo on, but she didn't, <laughs> which was just like really odd. Like it's basically she's bent over and this woman is having sex with her from behind. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's just there's nothing there when she gets up. So I don't know if the part was written for a man and then they just casted a woman or I. It's hard to say. Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, every character who was a male character was played by a girl. So, but they uh, yeah. kept it as a male character. It seemed like that was the odd thing. It's like, yeah, the one was dressed up in a suit, and <laughs> and she wasn't like having lesbian sex with her. She was just like ramming her from behind, which was super <laughs> odd. Yeah. So I don't after know where that, this movie was going, <laughs> I I don't know either. I'm trying my best, man. So oh, after shit. that odd scene, uh, what you referenced, she's singing to what you think would be a baby. But actually what's in there is just like a potato, a corn stock, <laughs> some kind of I don't vegetable. know what it was. Yeah. A toy or a piece of wood. I, I don't know. It was something. I don't know. Well, it, it was, was, she it was had, singing. It was stringy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When she was singing, and, I, and this is like a vampire movie, I thought it would be a bat because she, was, she had bat in the lyrics. She did. And then yeah. a bat bit her. So my mind was just filling in the blanks, but the bat didn't come from the... Um, <laughs> The, the 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 baby thing so i i don't know what i don't know what it was but i guess her storyline is that she's heavily sedated because her husband slash wife whatever that female character is that's married to misty keeps giving her drugs and misty is playing the part like i don't know like she's crazy or delusional or mentally ill and um she kind of meanders through the movie as well i think i think her sister in the movie is having an affair with her wife slash husband. And the sister is supposed to be Van Helsing. I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. 
a lot of this review is going to be, I think, because <laughs> yeah, I, it's just it's just a wild guess as to what's going on. So I think that the sister is Van Helsing, who's also having an affair with Misty's wife, and I think all of this is just to get more sex scenes in there. And she has sex with Dracula as well. Go figure, Van Helsing and. Dracula having sex together. <laughs> this is where I'm glad they're both women because I don't want to see a male man <laughs> having sex with a, a male Dracula. Um, so I guess we can jump to the end because the end took me like 15 minutes to watch and like an hour to try to comprehend what the hell I saw. So <laughs> what I think happened, stop me, correct me if you think I'm wrong in any way that after Van Helsing has sex with Dracula, uh, Dracula then tells Van Helsing, Bullets won't kill a vampire. So they start making out, and then she lightly puts her hands around her neck, and then suddenly Dracula just collapses and dies. Then Misty comes and shoots her sister. You are free. Then Misty's wife slash husband says congratulations. I have to leave and make more children of the night. You must excuse me, Mina. I have new generations to create. So she was a vampire? I guess. Misty is pregnant, but she's only had sex with women. So I don't know who impregnated her. She then tells the Butterface girl who was naked in the tub, who the whole movie is been told that, hey, she's a vampire, she's thousands of years old, she's been killing people. Missy then tells her that the tall blonde who's been telling her that and making love to her the whole movie was actually lying to her. And that blonde is actually the one who killed her parents and her family. But then Butterface says, I don't care, I love her anyway. I love you, Sarah. And then they go off together. Misty gives birth to a tiny baby. Something. <laughs> Something. <laughs> and, and then the end? Did I miss anything? <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah, now, at the very, very end, when the, those two, other two hovered in on that baby, were they supposed, were they doing going to do something to it? Or do, did they do something? I, I don't know. Kind of just cut away quickly, and that was it. Yeah. So I guess the director was trying to be super. I don't know if this is what I'm trying to figure out. Maybe you'll have a theory. Was this a softcore movie that was trying to be artistic or an artistic movie that had to put softcore scenes in it to sell? If this was trying to be artistic, I think it failed. I mean, my, my my opinion was that it was just uh, it was just a showcase for for nudity, sex scenes, tits and ass, and they put a flimsy plot around it. That's kind of the feeling I got about it. They may have but, even written it at, on the spot as they were doing it. I don't know. Yeah, it seemed like you know community theater uh, level of porn star level of acting. <laughs> but I mean, you've seen a lot of softcore movies. Are they usually this over the top with the storyline? That's the thing that threw me off. I mean, in the ones that I've seen, I've seen a lot of foreign ones, like from the 70s and, and, and even early 80s and stuff. They they had somewhat of a plot around them generally. It wasn't just sex. Um, this one was just odd. It was an odd entry. I, clearly, they were going for the Dracula theme, but... Uh, it didn't even quite follow the story other than the character names. So yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it was just, let's just, let's just have a, an eight minute sex scene throw a couple lines and then have another one. Yeah. <laughs> You're not lying. These scenes were at least eight minutes long with mm -hmm. these sex scenes. Oh my God. But that scene in the cemetery was, was, was eight or nine minutes. It was <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't believe it when I looked at the clock, not that the movie was blowing by, but it seemed like there were like four scenes in the movie I'd seen. <laughs> and it was like 40 minutes. It just seems like these scenes were just wouldn't end. It was just a <laughs> lot of rubbing and touching of breasts and rubbing of vaginas. And 10 minutes later, next scene, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I don't recall this ever playing on like the Cinemax and the HBOs back in that era. Um, uh, if it did, it probably had a little bit censored out of it because this was... Um, 
they had some close-ups and things you usually didn't find out on Cinemax, but. Yeah, it wasn't quite pornographic, but it was further than what you would expect from a typical Correct. horror movie. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know she said that um, her favorite movie was Chantel, which was also directed by this director, I think, uh, a year or two later. Um, oh. Yeah. I'm not familiar. I'm actually, I, I was looking up the director because I haven't, I mean, this, I, I have Lust for Dracula. I have also a movie called Lust for Frankenstein, which I think I bought on the same day. Um, but it looks like they're not related in any way. I, I don't see I think Lust for Frankenstein is, a, um, I think that's Andy Warhol movie, isn't it? No, that's uh, that's a that's flesh for Frankenstein, which I I also have. Yeah, Lust for Frankenstein came out in the same era. In fact, I missed I maybe missed. No, I don't think Misty Monday is in that one, but um, it came out right around the same time. But yeah, I don't see any relation between the two. Uh, Tony Marsigli is the director, and I, like I said, I don't know what what he was going for. It was it was tough to tell. Um, but yeah, this was this was an odd one, man. I'm sorry for making you watch this one, man. I, nope, that, yeah, I, I had to get to idea. it sometime. <laughs> oh my god, I, it's, it's I, been I, in my collection for 15, 16 years, and I haven't watched it until today. So, yeah, I, I watched say, it at some point. I will say the cinematography was a lot better than I would expect from a movie like this. It looked good, it shot sure wise. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought the music was okay. Um, I didn't think the direction was bad. Um, obviously, the acting sucked. The storyline was... Oh, the script... <laughs> oh, I, 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 the women were attractive. Yes, they were. Absolutely. Yeah. And there was a that, weird... That, I was going to say, that's, that's pretty much why the movie was made. Yeah. And there was a weird rape scene in there as well. Mm-hmm. Where yeah. Misty's wife raped her. But again... No penis, no no dildo, penetration. No <laughs> penetration. It was just the oddest rape scene in the history of cinema, I think. <laughs> so, oh, I, I don't know. Is there anything else we didn't cover with this? No, there's, there's not much more to say. Uh, I thought the scene of swallowing the cross was a little strange. I hadn't seen that before, but that's true. That's true. I liked that scene actually, but I don't know what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Something to like about this movie. This, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was that was unusual. You're right. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, I, man, I think this is going to be the first movie I would not recommend. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? I can't argue that. I mean, if if you're looking for a lot of nudity in a, in a non pornographic way, you can't go wrong with this. But uh, that's about the only thing going for it. Yeah, I wouldn't even say watch it for Misty because she's not even one of the main characters. I mean, I guess she's one of the main characters, but she doesn't have like a ton of screen time or anything. No, she has actually probably the least amount of nudity between them, but she, she, she takes her clothes off too. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. I would say go for one of the movies we mentioned before, um, the Planet of the Apes one, the Spider Babe one, the G-String Lord of the Rings one. Because at least they're referencing movies that you would get the references with. With this, when there's no sex, what's going on on screen is just confusing, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Said it Uh, all. (laughs) Hopefully, we'll do better next week.